morning and welcome. Good to see all of you here on this blessed Christmas day, a day we come and remember, celebrate, and receive from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his forgiveness and his mercy. The only announcement I have this morning is one you might already know. We ran out of bulletins, uh, so it's okay. Uh, we're all part of the body of Christ, so don't hesitate to share with your neighbor, please. So that's the only announcement we have. The Lord bless and keep you in your worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God. Our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing Joy to the World 387. <laughs>
The Old Testament lesson for this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices, with their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Bring forth into joy, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle lesson is from Hebrews, the first chapter. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord O Christ. Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day of the Father's love begotten. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The theme for this Christmas day is entitled The Word Became Flesh and it's based on our gospel lesson from John chapter 1, a portion of which we read again. Hear now that word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So far, our text. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, watching the news the other night, uh, a particular story caught my eye. It was a story about NASA now launching a brand new satellite deep into space. And the engineer who was being interviewed about that launch was very excited because he says, now when this satellite deploys and opens and sends us back information, we're going to learn about the origins of the universe. Now, I'm sure that we'll all be amazed at the pictures that come back from a satellite like that, at the, the marvel of the things that have been created. But our Christmas gospel tells us all we need to know about the origins of the universe. We may not be able to understand the marvel of God's creation, but we can understand in plain words. All things were made through him. Nothing that was made was made without him. Christ is the origins of the universe. The word of God that called all things into being out of nothingness. It's an opportunity for us this Christmas once again to say to the world, we know from whom we came and we know to whom we shall return. We did not arrive here by accident. It wasn't a happy coincidence that put us in this place. It was God's design, God's work. Even the psalmist talks about that in terms of our very own bodies. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I didn't get here by evolution. I didn't get here by accident. The way my hands are designed, the way eyes are supposed to work and ears hear, all of these things and their complexities work together because of the design of God who made us. The Word brought us into being. The Word is the life and light of men, John says. It makes me think of Adam, <clears throat> dust of the ground, laying there lifeless, a pile of dirt, until God breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. That Word of God that brings to us life and light. John also clues us in, in this Christmas gospel, to why so many are blind to this particular truth. Why they continue to search for the origins of the universe to explain the intricacies of this creation and this world. The darkness could not comprehend him. That's a, a statement that darkness exists. It speaks about the blindness of sin and the death of sin that comes to all men because all have sinned. It has no power over Jesus Christ, the Savior, but it exists. God's creation designed in perfection to live in communion and fellowship with him uninterrupted, was interrupted when Satan tempted Eve and Adam and the world fell into sin. Now there's all kinds of imaginations of, of man, that they are great, that they are powerful, that they are above everything else. Was it not even early in the history of mankind that they said, let's build a tower into the heavens to show our greatness. Was it not man 
that said what the devil had tempted, we will be like God. Was it not man throughout history who rejected the existence of God, the mercy of God, the power of God? The pages of Holy Scripture are full of these things. They are sad. And we understand these things in our own flesh as we are afflicted by sin. We understand, as the Apostle Paul did, even though we desire to do the things that God wants us to do, we do the very opposite. And we fall under the same heading, the same title. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? When we meditate upon the degradation and the despair, the destruction, when we look at our own bodies as intricate as they are and we see them aging and bearing all of the problems, the sicknesses, we might want to say to ourselves, and why in the world would the word desire to become flesh and dwell among us? Why would he want to take flesh upon himself? The Christmas celebration is the answer because he loved you so much. And the good news is he is like you, the scriptures say, in every respect except he has no sin. He was not ashamed to take on human flesh, to assume humanity into the divinity. But he did so to redeem flesh, to bring about salvation, to deliver us from affliction. Sin, the power of the devil, death and hell, cannot envelop him. It cannot destroy him. And although John recognizes in our Christmas gospel there will be those who do not believe, like those who think this marvelous universe got here by itself, like those who believe that the complexity of humanity arrived by some happy accident, like those who just simply go on their merry way, ignoring what the Bible has to say. Though John recognizes there will be those in the world, he also talks about believers. He talks about you and he talks about me. And what a great gift that was that Jesus would take on human flesh. Perhaps we should think more often about the fact that Jesus was like us except for sin. Ever get tired? Ever get hungry? Ever get discouraged? Jesus felt all those things. He is like us in every respect. Ever have pain? Ever bleed? Ever suffer? Jesus was like us in every respect, but without sin. It was not his sin that brought the wrath of the law. It's your sin and my sin. It was not his sin that brought the penalty of death. It's your sin and my sin. And yet Jesus was willing to take on human flesh and to bear the sins of the whole world, to become obedient unto death, even death upon a cross, to deliver us from sin. The world is not much different today <clears throat> than it was when Jesus came into the world. You know the story and you know it well. Herod's persecution, the killing of all the male children under two years old in the district of Bethlehem. The desire to exterminate the word made flesh, impossible. The desire to stop God's plan from coming, impossible.
impossible. It happened in the ministry of Jesus. They would stone him. They would desire to throw him off the cliff. But those things did not take place because it was not the time. It was not the way. It was not the manner in which God would save. Even Pontius Pilate, in apathetic arrogance, says to Jesus, Don't you know that I have power over you, life and death? And Jesus says, you would have no authority over me except that it had been given to you from above. Now is the time. The purpose for which this babe came into the world. It's not the glory of man that we see on the cross. It's the glory of God. Jesus says, now is the Son of Man glorified. And when he is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. That's the glory of God. The bleeding, dying Jesus, that's the glory of God. And we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. The law observed, the punishment paid, happens only when God takes on human flesh. He displays his glory, though strange to the eye of man, looking like foolishness and weakness, it is God's greatest glory. He has stepped into your place and to my place, and he has saved us. Though we deserve it not, it is his glory. He saved us from sin. Was John one of the three disciples who got to see Jesus as he truly was on the Mount of Transfiguration? Yes. Did he understand that there was a, a greater glory in terms of man's definition when Jesus would ascend into heaven? Yes, he understood those things. And yet the greatest thing that God ever did for us was to die in our place and rise again that we might have everlasting life. These things cannot be separated from the miracle at Bethlehem. They cannot be divided for all of Christ's work has that particular purpose. He sheds blood in his circumcision for us. He is wounded for us and sheds his blood to be our savior and our sin is covered. Our great glory and great blessing is that we share in those things with our Lord. In baptism, here is the glory of God. He brings sinners out of death into everlasting life. How? By water and the word in which he makes us to share with Christ in his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. In the simple words of absolution, it is good that we know them well. We ought to rehearse them continually in our lives. In our prayers before God to say to him, I know your word for me, O Lord. Your word is this, my sins are forgiven. In the Lord's Supper. In the celebration of Christmas and the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, one of the high moments of the church is to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Why? Because Jesus came in the flesh. This is my body. This is my blood given and shed for you. It is a mystery of faith. And yet the word of God tells us this is what is true. For if Christ had not come in the flesh, there would be no gift of redemption, no gift of forgiveness, no gift of salvation for you and for me. We rush to the altar of our God. We come with joyful hearts confessing our sins because we know there is forgiveness for us here. And we receive that body and blood of Jesus Christ our Savior as often as possible for it is God's seal of forgiveness to us. 
It is real forgiveness, real life, real salvation for you and for me. Because the word became flesh. We might have what theologians would say some Gnostic tendencies. We think about our souls, we think about the glory of heaven. As we age, we're not all that thrilled with the body that God gave us. Arthritis, poor eyesight, broken bones, cholesterol problems, heart, kidney, cancer afflictions. And yet, what is Christ's promise to you? The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. This one who took on human flesh will not separate body and soul for eternity, but will raise your body to be like unto his glorious body. What a wonderful thing Christ has done for us. Not only does he forgive our sins, not only does he redeem us, but he's going to put things right the way he intended so that body and soul we live with him in heaven with no sin, with no sickness, with no dying in glory everlasting. That's the importance of this little baby in Bethlehem. That's the plan of God. To do for you and for me what we could not do for ourselves so we will not be separated from him for eternity but in him we have everlasting life. No wonder the church sings joy to the world. No wonder the call is oh come all you faithful Go to Bethlehem, go to the manger, see in the eyes of faith, in your mind's eye, what God has done for you. And know that in the body of Jesus, you will someday see the glorified marks of the nail prints in his hands, the glorified scar of the crown of thorns on his head, the marks of love that God has for you when the word became flesh. This universe is a marvelous thing. Something that God has created. Something that he invited his creation to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, to subdue it. To learn about the things that God has made and that he has done. And yet all of this passes away. Heavens and, heaven and earth pass away. But my word, God says, my word shall remain forever. That same word of truth that emanates from the mouth of our Savior. That word made flesh who is eternal. The only begotten Son of God who takes on human flesh that we might have everlasting life. Glory be to God for his marvelous plan. And as we ponder the mysteries of his creation, let us worship the creator. Let us give glory to the one who called us into being out of nothing. And more than that, glorify Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is the one who redeemed us, that we might gather and sing and celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus, the word of God that became flesh. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in this same Christ Jesus, amen. We remain standing for the prayers of the church.
Let us pray. In the beginning, you created all things by your word. And in the fullness, O God, of your word, of time, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word made flesh dwell richly among us, that faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood, we may receive the fullness of your grace and truth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. All Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we shall remain standing for our Sanctus hymn, Let Our Gladness Have No End, hymn 381. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
of this true body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you all in that one true faith from now until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift upon you his countenance and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.